Now let's look at driving a very common load, which is called a light emitting diode or LED. So LED, like I said, stands for light emitting diode. And what's important about that is that a diode by itself is an electronic device <coughs> uh, which has a particular behavior. And a light emitting diode is a specific type of diode that will emit light under certain conditions. So what we need to do to understand uh, how the voltage and currents flow through an LED is we first have to understand what a uh, diode is. But LEDs are a very common device driven by uh, <coughs> digital circuits. Uh, th this is an example of uh, like a common LED that you'll see in you know household electronics. Uh, you can put these on breadboards. But with LEDs being used for lighting and television and monitors and displays, LEDs are becoming one of the most common loads that you drive outside of a digital circuit. So it becomes important to try to understand uh, well, what considerations need to be made. So <clears throat> let's start by looking at the behavior of a diode. So a diode is, the symbol for a diode is a triangle with a line on it, and it's a directional device meaning that it, the terminals are not arbitrary. Uh, the terminal that's on this side of the triangle is called the anode, and the terminal down here on the, this side of the triangle is called the cathode. And we're only, gonna, we're only gonna look at a certain mode of operation for the LED, and that's the one that's most commonly driven, or most commonly used for uh, driving with the digital device. What we're actually after is, we're at the first configuration we wanna look at is we want to drive a logic high and turn on the LED. So we just want to have a one turn on the device and a zero turn off the device. And then we'll look at how we can do the uh, complement of that. But before we do, we got to understand uh, the behavior of this uh, device. So what we're going to do is we get define a couple specifications. When you have a diode, you typically are given what's called the forward voltage. <clears throat> and the forward voltage is, is defined as the positive side of the voltage is on the anode, the negative is on the cathode, and you're going to have current, which is called the forward current, that flows from the anode to the cathode. And the way that a diode works, it's a nonlinear device, and what that means is that there's not a linear relationship between the current and the voltage as you would see in, a, as an, in an ex, like a resistor. Instead, what you're going to see is if I plotted the forward voltage versus the forward current, what goes on is that you can increase the forward voltage up to a certain point, and that point is defined as the forward voltage spec, and then what ends, ends up happening is as soon as you hit that, the current will then start flowing, and a, a small change in the forward voltage represents a large change in the current. So kind of the center point of this, of this curve where it starts flowing is, is the forward voltage specification. <clears throat> and what's important about this, even more important, is that this right here is basically it clamps the amount of voltage that can be developed across the diode. So it doesn't just increase linearly forever. So what ends up happening is that, for example, if I came along and I drove, let's say I had a digital gate and I was going to put uh, 5 volts across a diode that had a, vol a forward voltage spec of 2 volts, what would happen is that I would start increasing my output and I'm going to go from 0 to 5 volts. So this diode would develop that voltage, so it would develop 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and it would go all the way up to 2 volts, and then it would clamp at 2 volts, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't develop any more voltage across it. That becomes a concern when you're, when you're looking at the digital gate behavior, or the digital circuit behavior, because that means you're never going to allow that output voltage to go to 5 volts. It'll clamp out at 2 volts. So you're trying to drive 5 volts, but you're only, you're only allowing it to go to 2 volts, and that can damage the part. So we need to think about the way a diode behaves when we try to build a, a circuit that can actually turn on the LED, uh, and we need to consider this, this uh, forward voltage clamping behavior. Another uh, <coughs> consideration is that the current that flows through a light emitting diode, so if I made this a, a light emitting diode, the symbol now is the same as a regular diode, except you draw these little arrows that come out of it, and that shows that it's a light emitting diode. So it's basically just the same as a diode, it's just a special type 
pestle type of manufacturing that allows light to come out of it. But the light is dependent on, or the luminosity of the light is dependent on the current. So what you'll also get with an LED is a forward current <coughs> that's recommended that'll give you a certain amount of light. So it'll draw like that as light. So let's say, for example, they put this right here where this gives you the most luminosity. So you might have something where you might have hardly, if I plotted like a luminosity this way, you might have hardly anything and then it would go like this <coughs> and then down. So within this current range right here, <coughs> you're gonna have a lot of good light. And then down here, you don't have any light. Up here, it saturates out and it's not really good light. So right here is where you wanna do that. So what they would say is you look at the data sheet and you might say that this is where you want to put the current in order to get the best light out of this LED. Okay, <clears throat> so let's take a look at a digital circuit which accounts for a bunch of these things or accounts for these this behavior. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put in somewhere for the extra voltage to go. So like we talked about, we have a diode and let's just say for example that it's forward voltage was two volts. And what that means is that when we try to drive our five volt example, we're gonna have a VOH equal to five volts. Now, this five volts, once I start ramping up to it, I'll have two volts, which develop across the diode. I've got another three volts that I need to ha allow to develop somewhere. Well, one of the easiest things to do is to just simply put a resistor right here and the resistor will then allow the rest of the three volts to develop across it. So as you increase the voltage, what will happen is that no current will flow. So you got zero volts, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and all the voltage will develop across the diode first. So as soon as the diode reaches two volts, then the current will start flowing and then the rest of it will develop across, the rest of the three volts will develop across the resistor. So that's the, that's the topology that we use when we're driving an LED when we want a high to equal an on. The last step of this is how do you set the forward current through the diode? <coughs> well, the way you do it is we have a resistor and we have a fixed voltage across it. So what we can do is we can select the value of the resistor to achieve whatever forward current we want. So let's take an example, let's continue this example, and let's just say that the data sheet said that at 10 milliamps, the diode would give off really good light, really pure light. So what we can do is we can say, okay, in this configuration, I can use Ohm's law, so V is equal to IR, and I can choose the value of the resistor to get 10 milliamps. I know that three volts is what's across the resistor just based upon the diode developing two and then clamping and then the rest of it being across the resistor. So of this five volts, three of it was across the resistor. The current I want is 10 milliamps and the resistance is what I'm solving for. So my resistance here is gonna be three divided by 10 milliamps which equals 300 ohms. So if I choose this to be 300 ohms, when I go on the output of this basic gate, and I take it to a logic high and output five volts, I will have three volts across the resistor, two volts across the diode. I will allow only 10 milliamps to flow through the resistor and the diode. That'll turn on the diode, and that 10 milliamps comes directly out of the basic gate or the, the logic gate. <coughs> so then I also know that this is gonna be my IOH current. What happens when I try to drive this to a logic low? I have zero volts, well, the entire thing shuts off because I don't have any voltage across the diode, any voltage across the resistor, no currents flowing, and it's off. So now I have a high is equal to on and a low is equal to off. Let's take a look at the other case, <coughs> which is where I want to drive a diode or a light, light emitting diode, an LED. But in this situation, I'd rather have a logic low be on. So I'm gonna have an LED and I want a low equal on. So the way you can accomplish that is by doing a topology like this. You can take your logic gate and we'll take VCC up here and we will go through a diode and then we'll put a resistor also. So what we'll do here is We'll put a resistor 
and then we'll put our diode. And then in that configuration, what will happen is that current will then flow this way, and it will flow back into the transmitter, and it will turn on that LED. <clears throat> so let's do, let's do an example with some different values in it. Let's say I'm using 3.4 volt CMOS. That means that my power supply for the whole system is 3.4 volts. And let's say that the forward voltage for the LED, let's make this an LED by putting those little arrows there, was something like 1.8 volts. Let's say that the data sheet also said that the forward current for good illuminicity was at something like 4 milliamps. So what I want to do is I want to solve for the value of R that will give me that forward current. So I come along and I'm going to first start by thinking about when I have a low and a high, what's going on. So the first case is a low. So a low is going to be when you output a zero volt. So when I output here, I'll have VO is equal to a zero volts. That's the condition where current will flow. And the reason is, is that I have a voltage drop, 3.4 across the resistor, across the diode, and down to the zero volts. So this will indeed give me the LED being on. But look at what happens when I output a high of plus 3.4 volts. Well, when I put 3.4 volts here, what happens is there's a no voltage drop across these two components. So I have 3.4, 3.4, there's no voltage drop. So that means that this no current's going to flow, the LED will not be on, and I have an off condition. So I really, this is kind of the uninteresting case other than it's how you turn the LED off. This is where I want to spend my time analyzing this. So let's begin by putting the voltages across the various components here. So I've got plus 3.4 volts, and I've got a resistor, and then I've got a diode, and my VOH, or my VOL is zero volts. So what I'm going to have is this will, as I turn this on, what will happen is that the voltage will develop across the diode and it will develop up to 1.8 volts and then what it'll do is it will clamp there, it'll allow current to flow and then the remaining voltage will then develop across the resistor. So the remaining voltage is simply going to be uh, 3.4 minus 1.8 which is going to be 1.6. So this right here is going to be 1.6 volts. So if I added those together, it'd be 3.4, so that's right. So now I know the following. I know this is on and current is going to flow, but I also know that I have a resistor that has a known voltage across it, and I can use Ohm's law once again to solve for the resistor value that I need in order to get the recommended current. So in this situation, I wanted 4 milliamps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 1.6 volts is equal to 4 milliamps multiplied by an unknown resistor. So my resistor is equal to 1.6 divided by 4 milliamps. And the resistor in this case is going to be 400 ohms. So if I put 400 ohms here and I put out an output of 0 volts on my di digital circuit, what would happen is 1.8 volts develops across the diode. That meets the forward, via, forward uh, voltage requirement. The remaining amount is going to develop across the resistor. And due to the 400 ohm resistance, that will only allow 4 milliamps to flow. That 4 milliamps will go through the LED, and it will turn it on with good luminosity. And then it will flow back into the device and then down like that. And that is driving an LED.